Hi team, this is Janos, this is Real World Audio, and this is Void Pipe Physics for Dummies. And uh, today the operative words are simplicity and functionality. And uh, just for those of you who are new to my channel, I've been building void pipes for more than 20 years. I built and designed a lot, and I heard even more. I researched the entire literature on uh, void pipe, transmission line, and quarter wave pipe physics, and uh, tried out all of it. And uh, actually, what my experience is that I just needed to throw it in the garbage and just uh, go with my experiences and what they taught to me. And uh, here in this episode, I'm going to summarize uh, it for you. I hope to make it relatively short and functional. So basically, what is a void pipe? Void pipe is a device like this. You have uh, a speaker cabinet, which is triangular shape. And there is around halfway, there is a driver in it, a single driver. And down here, there is a port. And um, so that's it. It's, it's super simple, super duper simple. And all the fuss is about uh, how, how is this angle exactly? How tall shall we make it? How wide shall we make it? What's the size of the loudspeaker we put in it? Uh, shall we put in the loudspeaker exactly halfway, little higher, little lower? Uh, what does that count? What the material should be for the cabinet? Which is the best driver for it exactly? And, and in what sort of rooms will it work? And uh, to understand that, let's just have a look at the physics. I'm going to explain it in very, very simple words with the practicality and uh, applicability in mind not i'm not going to write a thesis on it so that's not the purpose of this video to give you a degree in your hand so you can hang it on your wall no for that you just go and research all the void pipe literature and transmission line literature and get yourself a degree in mathematics if you need to understand it so what we need to understand here is that void pipes are basically pipes uh, and what are pipes? Like an organ pipe. So basically it's a tube. And, and the tube, basically it has two places in it. One place where you blow the air in it. Or if it's an organ, there's a spot where you blow air into the uh, organ pipe. And there's another slot where the uh, air can escape from the pipe. And uh, however, between these two, there's one spot where the air, where the pressure enters, and there's another spot where the air exits. And, uh, and, uh, and the difference between two is that uh, after we have, like in this case, the driver is creating the sound waves inside the cabinet, and the sound waves start to bounce. They will go up and down, up and down. They will start like, like a bouncy house. So the pressure wave fluctuation is going down. And as it goes down, it widens up. And then it goes up, it narrows down. Widens, narrows. So it got, does this uh, ping-ponging effect. And, and as it does this uh, up and down bouncing, the uh, basically the momentum and the directionality of the pressure change stabilizes. And, and because there is no set single dimension like in a box cabinet that we have the height, width and depth, but we have a constantly changing dimension, there will not be a preferentially amplified single frequency that occurs during these pressure changes. So that's the big genius thing in void pipes compared to regular box cabinets, is that when the pressure bounces, the pressure also bounces in your base reflex cabinet. So let's say like right here, this is like the box cabinet, but when it bounces, the, all the dimensions are the same. So those frequencies which correspond to the specific 
dimensions of your cabinet, they will be preferentially overamplified and they will excite the cabinet to resonate like crap. Now, in a void pipe, what happens is that as the pressure bounces up and down, there is not a single frequency that's uh, emphasized because the uh, narrowness constantly changes. So, when then the pressure goes here, there, the, the exact frequency, which is preferentially amplified, changes at every instant. So, there will not be a single one that's overly preferred to excite the cabinet into resonances. Also, the cabinet size is a triangle, which is the most stable shape, and it's the most uh, rejecting resonances, while the rectangle is very, very prone to be excited by mechanical resonances. So we have two really big things going for the shape of this cabinet. And now why are we doing a bouncy house inside the loudspeaker? We are doing that because the sound waves that the driver, that the cone can produce, it can excite only those frequencies which are the size of the cone. And that's basically down to about 1 kilohertz frequencies. And, and those sound waves which are longer than that, they are basically too long for the driver to excite and it and it cannot doesn't have enough uh, width enough uh, uh, enough flap basically enough surface to make uh, to excite those low frequencies and uh, and and when that happens in a basal flex cabinet basically we are creating a high pressure zone so that high pressure zone can be coupled to the air but when we create the high pressure zone, we lose the ability to, to have a dynamic uh, resolution for the base. It's going to get messed up, congested. Things are going to get bouncing all around and you lose a lot of detail, a lot of resolution. However, when you have a, a pipe, uh, when you have this bouncing up and down, that's a, a uniform airflow basically in this direction alone, while in a cabinet it's bouncing all everywhere with preferential frequencies uh, coming out of it. So here you have this bouncy house, and there there's a big opening here, which is not a port, it looks like a port, but it's not a port, because it's a free opening. So those frequencies which get excited like a bouncy house are free to propagate into your living room. So basically we have this scenario, and then we have the void pipe, and the frequencies, the low frequencies are excited within the cabinet, and the, that excitation goes out. So this is the exact same process as uh, creating waves. So imagine the ocean, and you see the ocean waves coming towards you. So, so the cabinet creates those ocean waves and they start coming out of the port and then once a wave is initiated it just continues its, its momentum and goes out into the room. Uh, that's how a void pipe works and uh, that's how it creates base. So it does not create a high pressure base, it just creates the wave and the wave is allowed to flow directly into your room. Now. What are the limitations of the void pipe? The limitation of the base is the, the height of the pipe. So basically the height defines the quarter wavelength of the lowest frequency that it has full energy for the output. And half of that frequency is the absolute minimum output of the, of the, of the pipe. So basically if the inside air column in your void pipe is 2 meters tall, that's 200 centimeter, that corresponds to the quarter wave of an 8 meter long wave, that's uh, approximately 42 hertz or so. So it means that if, you, if the inside of your void pipe is 2 meters high, then a 42 hertz wave can be 
formed by that void pipe with full energy, full energy output. And then the energy starts to roll off from there down to half of that, down to a 16 meter wavelength, which is 21 hertz. So basically, when you have a 2 meter tall void pipe, it can put out down to 21 hertz uh, uh, clean base. That's the uh, limit in the frequency, provided that the driver itself is, is comfy working down to that range. And uh, you also need a second requirement is that, as you see, we do not, did not pressurize the room, we are tugging on the waves, so we are creating these pressure waves. And, uh, and, the pressure, and these waves are created inside, and they are propagating into the room. Now, if your room is too short, the length of the room where the pipe faces is not long enough, then it cannot release those waves into the room. If, it, if those waves, which are the quarter wave, is here inside the pipe, and that needs to be extended to a full wave. Uh, so it means that to have 21 Hz output from a 2 meter tall void pipe, you need a 16 meter long room. Just like for an organ pipe, <laughs> you need a church, right? Those big pipes there are not for joke and the size of the building is not for joke. That's because of physics. And that's the exact same physics that the void pipe uses and that's why you need a really long room for really low output. Now, do not despair, because if you have half of that uh, size for your room, let's say instead of 16 meters, you have only 8 meters long wave, there you can also have 21 hertz, but because the room is sufficient to support half the wavelength. Now, what that means is that you will have a, a clean 21 hertz there, not as strong as in a full wave situation, but if you want to go like a hertz or two higher, then that will not be supported very well and the, and the bass will be choppy. So there will be some notes over represented, some under represented, and, and you will not have a nice even response. To have a nice even response, you need that 16 meters long room for a clean 21 hertz for a long void pipe. Uh, now, if you have half of that, then uh, usually in real life situation, probably that's the best you can get because uh, a 16 meter long room would require a very, very high output level to sustain SPL in there. And uh, realistically, single drivers, uh, they will work for you up to about an eight meter long room. So basically, yes, you can have a 20 Hertz uh, response from a void pipe in an 8 meter long, provided that a driver is good down to there. Usually, I haven't met one yet that is that might do it. Actually, the cube audio drivers are the ones that potentially could do it. Like uh, the, the, the 10F, the 10 inch uh, Magnus that might be able to do this fit. Uh, however, they will be all very comfy to go to 30 hertz, 25 hertz, no problem. And, uh, and for that, basically, you will need a room that's at least uh, 5, 6 meters or, or longer in a single dimension. And basically, the more you restrict the length of your room, the more you restrict the lower end of your uh, base response. And if you have a, like a, a four or five meters long room, you can already have like, like a 32 hertz pretty good in such a room. So, and, and for that, you need a void pipe that is commensurately sized to allow the formation of that uh, longest wave that you want to produce, that lowest frequency. Now, uh, second thing. Uh, people are wondering about the, the shape and the build of the pipe. So, so why, how come we see these triangular shaped uh, 
are they better or not than the ones that are folded that, that look like a cabinet and on the inside they, they have a buffer here so basically they are exactly this thing just the top one doesn't continue up but we just cut it down and we fold it back so the top part so the air has the same path it continues from the base and it gets narrower and narrower and narrower but here it turns 180 degrees and gets narrower and narrower and narrower and then then it widens up and dung dung so it but the air bounces like this in a folded pipe while in a straight pipe pipe it bounces like this and almost exact same thing is happening and the same thing is true for a folded pipe uh, basically you take the height of your pipe and multiply it by two because you need add this height plus that height in the back and that adds up to the total inner height of your pipe that defines the quarter wave that is the uh, full energy lowest uh, output point and um, so basically uh, you can convert any any straight pipe to a folded pipe just using by keeping this total air column length the same and also the the total volume the same and they are roughly equivalent even though they look very very different on the outside uh, now there are some differences though between the two is actually the one that's the triangle shaped it's uh, this is uh, mechanically uh, far superior to the box shape because it's triangle shape so there's no mechanical excitations on the side that are stable that are constant because every height has a different width and here we have a box a flat panel on the side and it will resonate as a unity so that's not a good thing however as as a side effect because it resonates as, as a unity and it's like roughly one meter size in height it will also provide you a little extra boost for the mid base so every uh, folded pipe i heard that is equivalent to a, a straight pipe using like similar driver similar size the folded one has stronger mid base so if that's your priority pick the folded one now the straight pipe disappears better so if you want uh, like a, a total 3d transparency the straight ones will give that uh, a little will give you an edge there because of the lack of that uh, uniform cabinet resonance that's missing for the triangle shape and uh, what else so basically uh, the other question is the is the angle so do i make it like like a that big fat pipe a narrower or, or a very skinny so what shall this angle be for that and now the answer for that is uh, defined by your driver look at the data sheet of the driver and look at the vas value the equivalent volume where that driver feels at home so if the VAS says let's say 50 liter then it means that the volume the internal volume the free air volume of the cabinet has to be around 50 liter or more for this cabinet to have good base output to have strong low frequency output because it's the height of the air column that defines what will be the strongest frequency supported but it's the free air volume that defines whether your driver can maintain that frequency or it can maintain only shorter wavelengths so basically if you have a void pipe and you think it sounds great but you want a little more lower end extension let's say you already have a two meter tall void pipe so in theory it should get you down to 20 hertz and you are getting maybe down to 40 hertz then 
you can go about two ways to solve the problem. One, maybe your driver is totally uh, insufficient for that and you need to look for another one. Or the internal volume, the fear volume is not enough. And then you need to increase this angle. So instead of a, a narrower, you need to widen it up to allow more free air volume inside the cabinet. And uh, based on my, my experience, you see that original shape I drew here. This is kind of like, like an optimal angle. So if your void pipes has about this angle, it has a potential to, to sound very, very good. If it's that deep like this, uh, that's not the best choice. It's, it's going to get compromises there. And if it's really skinny, like, 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 like this skinny, almost like, like a really tiny wedge, that's not going to get any base either. So, one more thing, truncated void pipes. So what, what on earth is a truncated void pipe? Maybe let's just draw it uh, right here. So this is when your... It is the same thing, so you have a void pipe, but the top part, like, like here, it's missing. So basically it's chopped off. And what this is going to do, it's going to get, get this uh, nice and chubby uh, cabinet with a lot of air volume, you see, because it's not skinny like this or skinny like that, but it's, it, it's more of a fat so right? It has a fatty, it has a belly to it. So uh, this design has the advantage to have bigger free air volume than a full height cabinet. So your driver will be happier to work in it, but because the top is cropped, a shorter wavelength, a shorter pressure zone can form in it, so it will not be able to support as low frequencies as a full void pipe. And uh, for you to pick the one that works the best for you, you need to be able to pick the right size for your driver and for your room. That's because, for example, for the 2 meter length, the theory is 20 hertz output, but if your driver cannot support it, maybe it, it's good down to 30 hertz, you do not need that 2 meter height. Maybe 1.5, 1.4 meter is enough. And, and then, for example, you look at the Cube Audio void pipe cabinet, that's what they are doing. They are truncating it and that, that allows like an F8 frequency down to about 30 Hz to form. And it gives that nice big free air volume to work in the uh, room sizes that they recommend for you. So that what the recommendations they have and the cabinet plans they give, they are supported by physics. And um, I think I will make a video on that, how, how to break that down, how to work it. For now, that's it. I'm taking already too long. Have an amazing day. I hope this helped everyone who wants to build their void pipe. Please like, subscribe. Ciao.